importante dahil parang uh, sinasabi natin sa sa uh, the whole world no na 500 years na tayo na naging Christians uh, yung nangyari alam po natin April 14 1521 yung unang baptism so, gusto ko po lang i-underline no yung una yung relationship ng Santo Niño sa sa first baptism the average was taken to the Philippines by the in the Magellan expedition. So it was given to uh, Juana as a baptismal gift by Magellan. Of course, lost for a time because of the unhappy ending of the expedition, rediscovered in 1565 the Caspian expedition. Yung account na namakita ni Ricaspe, nagpasalamat siya sa sa Dios na para sa kanya ito na yung reward no sa hardships nila. The finding or the, yes, the common symbol term of that is kaplag or kakaplag is the finding of the San Ignatius image in 1565. Right after that, it ignited the love or I mean the zeal of the missionaries to evangelize the country because they found the reason to continue the Christianization. Uh, hence, the, the role of the Santo Niño is very important historically because this very devotion was used by the missionaries to introduce the faith to the people. But the most important uh, event though, is since then, it united both the Spaniards and the natives. Uh, today, 92% of us are Catholics. They, they practice probably uh, folk Catholicism, which is a mixture of indigenous native practices and Catholic practices. Uh, it was eventually uh, uh, given and entrusted to the Augustinian friars who at the same time were present in that expedition because they were the ones in charge for the formal evangelization of our country in, in 1565. Now, when did this strong devotion begin? In the 1921 event, the 400th anniversary, it's recorded that there was a celebration at the Basilica. Hindi siya ganun ka. Laganap uh, naka spread all over. It started, I think, in 1965 during the 400th anniversary of the evangelization of the Philippines. So, 400th anniversary ng arrival ng Pilipinas when there was an international conference, international event. And there was a one week long series of events, including the first Sinulog contest. Because Sinulog used to be like caroling in house to house. In 1965, and then in 1981, the Sinulog Festival with a grand parade that created a whole event that internationalized and created a whole body of celebrations for the whole thing. So, 1965 and the 1981 Sinulog Festival started. May mga may nakikita po tayo na mga reasons why bakit malapit sa binoy ang Santo Niño devotion. They accepted the faith and they allow the faith to have a meaning in their lives. Before God, we should believe that, uh, like a loving parent, no, at bata tayo, hindi, hindi niya tayo pabayahan, no? uh, It is all, all, always an observation to us as, as Filipinos that we love children. No? And because uh, in, 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 uh, in our uh, love uh, of the presence of children in the family, kaya ang um, ang ano natin, yung, yung attention natin, yung pagpapakita natin ng pagpamahal is always with the children. And uh, if in the Bible, because of sin, yung mga tao na takot sa Diyos, na, when God reveals himself as a child, yung dating ba, hindi tayo na takot sa bata. No? Yung ninyo kasi attractive, no, babo, yung cute, no? instead na matakot tayo, parang we're drawn, no? na lumapit na malapit sa kanyang puso, madaling puntahan, madaling uh, 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 hingan ng mga padalangin. And so, the natural uh, ability of, of the person to connect with the child. At dahil nasa siya bata, at dahil nasa yung, yung naawit natin na batubalanin sa gugma, like a magnet, he draws us to himself. As the expression suggests, uh, the Batu Balani is, is a magnet. No? It draws us to him. No? Kaya nga yung, yung attitude ng Filipino, pag nakita mo yung bata, hindi ka umatras, no? pero lumalapit ka sa bata. At yun din yung pagtingin ko dito na 
even in which the Nino unites various people at the power of the Away Away, but in general, it brings unity to the country. In the last 500 years, Filipinos have fought for freedom, unity, and equality. We have made our mark in many fields, from science and medicine to culture and the arts. We are beacons of creativity, resourcefulness, resiliency, and compassion. In 2021, the Filipino people will join the world in commemorating one of the greatest achievements of mankind, the first circumnavigation of the world. We celebrate this historic achievement by bannering an important message. Over adversity and struggles, we shall triumph, putting humanity first, always. Good morning to everyone who are tuned in via Facebook Live on the NQC Learning Portal and the USC Museum Facebook page. I'm Regina Yoma from the USC Museum and I'm happy to welcome all of you to the second lecture of this webinar series. This fourth online event hosted by the museum is part of our efforts to remain engaged with the public by providing alternative avenues for learning and access to the collection online. Welcome to the second lecture of Cultura Ugkaagi, our culture and history, the USC Museum webinar series. This event is part of the Philippines 2021 King Centennial celebrations presented by the USC Museum and the USC Communications Office in collaboration with the National King Centennial Committee and the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. The inaugural lecture was held last August 8th with an insightful and very comprehensive presentation by Dr. John Peterson, archaeologist and the president and expert member of the ICOMAS committee. He talked about the Visayan archaeology and also mentioned the pioneering works of Dr. Rosa Tomazet and Dr. Carl Hutter in the downtown Cebu Salvage Archaeology Project. The materials excavated from those sites are part of the USC Museum's archaeological collection. And today, to continue our uh, conversation about the collection and uh, we have the director of the USC Museum and the head of the USC Communications Office give us a brief overview about our topic for today and to introduce our very special speaker for this morning. We have Dr. Dobbers Reynes Rosales. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our speaker today, I will introduce uh, Atta, who has been with us many international conferences. I have met him many times. Atta is uh, currently the uh, works at the Southeast Asian Ceramics Museum at the Bangkok University. His research interests focuses on Chinese, Southeast Asian, Japanese, and European ceramics found in Southeast Asia from the 12th to the 20th centuries. He published the articles such as Sisachanalai Saladon and its export to Southeast Asia in 2014, ships and maritime activities in the Northeastern Indian Ocean, reanalysis of rock art of Ham Parayanaga, the Viking King, Southern Thailand, uh, two years, three years ago, Sisachanalai figurines, <coughs> excuse me, reconstruction of ancient daily life 
beliefs and environment in Siam during the 16th century. Uh, before uh, Atta presents, I'd like to discuss the rationale why we are doing this presentation. Uh, by, and let, me, uh, let me present a short PowerPoint presentation to guide us in this uh, presentation. Uh, webinar. Um, share the screen first. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> for those of you who are familiar with Pigal uh, Feta or have read Feta, you will know that in on the first meeting they had with Humabon, he said he wrote uh, Magellan and. He wrote, he said, the king told him that he was welcome, but that it was for all ships that entered the reports to pay tribute, and that it was four days since a junk from Siama or Thailand laden with gold and slaves had paid him tribute. This is according to Antonio Pigafetta in Magellan's voyage around the world. And in the past, we have had many excavations in Cebu, where we have shown, uh, where we have recovered uh, high ceramics. Uh, for example, uh, this is an advance of the presentation already. Um, at the USA Museum, we have some of these uh, ceramics that I, I think Ata will also explain uh, from uh, Sisa Chanalai. Yeah, yeah, okay, and, and some fish plates, which I do not have here. Uh, when excavations were conducted in monitoring the south, uh, the, the SRP, South Road Property Subway Tunnel in Cebu. Some of these ceramics also came out of covered powder box and earthenware that I, I'm sure Atta will also talk about, which are from Thailand, uh, dating to the 14th or 15th centuries. At the Arsenas Galleries also, there is a collection of figurines and all uh, celadons and uh, other and jarlets and covered powder boxes also from Thailand. Um, so. Without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to, pre to present to you uh, Atta Sukham, the assistant curator at the Southeast Asian Ceramics Museum of the University of Bangkok. Atta? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chopper and uh, Jenna for introducing and also uh, I would like to thank for inviting me to be a part of this webinar series. All right. Um, okay. Um, this is my presentation about the ceramic texture of Thailand, and actually is all also includes the Southeast Asian ceramics as its background. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the purpose of the presentation today will introduce you about the development of Thai and Southeast Asian ceramics from early to modern history and will give better understanding of great ceramics production in Southeast Asia during the 12th to 18th century as exhibited in the Southeast Asian Ceramic Museum Bangkok U and also uh, they were found around the Southeast Asia as far as uh, on the coast of Africa, uh, India, uh, the Middle East, and even Europe. And sometimes it's what found in the shipwreck in the Japan or something like that. This starts by the development of ceramics found in Thailand and Southeast Asia. Um, since Southeast Asian, lead to proto and early history. During the first to 13th century, Indian, Chinese, and Persian ceramics were developed, uh, were discovered in Southeast Asia. Um, moreover, local ceramics were also created in the kingdom of Tawalawati, which was now northeastern and central Thailand, Sivijaya, which was now southern Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia and Khmer during P. Angkor and Angkor period, as is what now Cambodia in and northeastern Thailand. 
different characteristics of ceramics can be used for an identification of origin. Chinese hand ceramics were found at the potters with seal on it, as you can see on this. This is the handware. <clears throat> Indian ceramics were found at the knob and lunetted ware, as you can see. Um, this is the knob ware from India and uh, lunetted ware. Is not oh, this this one is lunetted ware from India. <clears throat> and the last in this page is the uh, Bush and ceramics, which was characterized by the turquoise glaze, as you can see here. Um, this one, this picture was taken uh, from uh, Lampo on the southern Thailand. As well as the local ceramics, such as Tawawati, use the Karinese pot, um, this one. Uh, with no plate and some were in place the design mm -hmm. on the shoulder that they were found in the central and northeastern Thailand. Sivijaya used the candy, this one, uh, with produced from with produced by five paste clay at Paokin in southern Thailand and Khmer in pre Angkor period produced candy with lead painting and then um this one is Piangko, uh, and then Angkor period produced as and brown grace. Um, this one, the Chinese marine time tattoos are called as marine time spy or and silk road. What began since Tang Dynasty, the form, gracings, and decoration technique are important characteristic to identify. The ceramics date in Tang Dynasty and Five Dynasty. Uh, and Ten Kingdom period were found both in all land and shipwreck sites, especially green grace, uh, bow grace, um, this one. <laughs> and even uh, white grace and splash wear. Mm -hmm. The Chinese marine time test for Southeast Asia <laughs> seem to be a continuous sign and seasonal achievement until the Northern Song Dynasty and Southern Song Dynasty. Some local influence, especially Khmer ceramics production, was transmitted or legend under control in later class Bangpun Kier production before in the city before establishment of Ayutthaya Kingdom and became a dependent city under it. Most effectiveness of Chinese maritime trade seemed to be happened during Yuan and Ming Dynasty from the 14th to 17th century because a lot of metal coin with Chinese mark date in both dynasty have been found together with ceramics in several archaeological contexts around Southeast Asia. Additionally, the Yuan and Ming that, uh, ceramics production also affect to Southeast Asia at the Kingdom of Dai Viet or Vietnam, Champa, Sukhothai, Lana and Lang Sang, Burma and Ayutthaya, which include the capital Ayutthaya and Banglajan, or previously known as Manam Noi Kin, at one of the dependent city under Ayutthaya. Ten, the Chinese ceramics, oh, sorry, the Chinese and Southeast Asian ceramics have usually been found together in the same context, especially at the ceramics production port, hinterland city, and shipwrecks, which suggest the cultural pattern of marine time trace across the region in this period. Qing, Japan, and European ceramics have also been found in this period, as well as they are also one of ceramics found together with Chinese and Southeast Asian ceramics in some cases. By the way, I will discuss more detail about this period later. <coughs> this page is showing the distribution as masterpiece of ceramics. You can see uh, Hisen or Karasu base of bowl from Japan in the 15th century. 
um, this one. Uh, zoom in picture of decoration on the shoulder of Bang Punja dead in the 15th century. Uh, Spanish ceramics found in San Diego shipwreck sunk in the Philippine water dead in the 17th century. But the production size of these ceramics is unclear. Alita or Imari, blue and white dish with VOC or that is Indian company mark dead in the 17th century. That tobacco pipe dead in the 17th century found at the VOC port in Ayutthaya. However, the distribution of ceramics is commonly uh, the coastal taste, as you can see in this, uh, in this area, and also deep into the hinterland, as well as the way for uh, distributing ceramics to the hinterland is the river shipping, uh, especially in Thailand by Chao Phaya and Ting River. So these are the Yuan ceramics with blue and white where become popular in Southeast Asia. Ming ceramics with mark of the length name, production page, or uh, and even uh, auspicious words became popular to paint on the base of ceramics produced at Jingde Zhenkin and Overgrass Animals where were first creation since this period. Um, this is uh, overgrazed animals. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this page is early Qing ceramics. This one is Dai Vies or Vietnam and even Champa that I would like to highlight for Brudo A as they were blue and white were ordered by Vietnamese coach in way to produce at Jing Te Chen Kin. This is the Sashina Lai and Sukho Thai Kin, which were under control by Sukho Thai Kingdom and later uh, were incorporated with Ayutthaya for export. Then they were merged to be Ayutthaya Kingdom or Siam. Lana, as one of the kingdom contemporarily with Sukhothai and Ayutthaya kingdom, as well as multiple location of kin were operated around the kingdom. Burma, which produced green and white or increased green, were only one in Southeast Asia, especially this group. Ayutthaya, as most of the kin located beside the capital Ayutthaya, and they produce and create ceramics only. And um, this one similar to the uh, USC Museum collection at Jobber just introduced. Um, and Benjelong where were also one of ceramics ordered to produce on demand similar to Buddha Way that were Chinese Siamese style overgrazed animal wear ordered by Ayutthaya court to produce at Jing Te Chen Kin. However, archaeologists usually uh, misidentify between Benjalong and Chinese traditional overgrazed animal wear because they are similar and just some uh, decorative uh, Pato that they different. <laughs> the last period of ceramic development is a colonization and decolonization period in Southeast Asia since the 18th century to around the 20th century. A lot of Chinese people seek for better opportunity in Southeast Asia as well as some of them will carry the ceramics to use at the destination. Benjolong ware will continue to use in the loyal cause as well as Lai Nam Tong or adding gold wash on blue and white and even overgrazed animal ware were new creation in Latanakosin period of Siam. Since the 19th century, European and Chinese influence were mostly affect to the taste of ceramic use in Siamese lawyer court, 
as well as the king, loyal family, noblemen, and even civilian, order for special production of ceramics at Jing Te Zhen Kin and some other factory in Europe. Sometimes they purchase raw white grass ceramics from China and paint Siamese style decorative petal in Bangkok. Moreover, Chinese immigrants established Chinese traditional ceramics production in Southeast Asia, especially in Siam, as you can see the list of production sites here. Some of Japanese traditional ceramics and model Japanese ceramics with painted English alphabet in Japanese language on the base were rarely found in Southeast Asia. With different with European in my class in black number to create new stage around Southeast Asia and a lot of European ceramics were found around Southeast Asia. As you can see the list of the uh, brand or taste mark here. There are various band of European South Great, South Great or Bow Great, uh, Transfer Pinch, Blue and White, Spong Dap, Amaral, or Hollandic Square are one of special production with uh, actually blue and white and overgrazed animal wear with painted European family or company coat of arm. They were similar to Bordeaux, Rudaway, Bentalong, and Lai Nam Tong as order to produce a Jing Te Zhen Kin in China since 18th century. And this tradition was continued to 19th century. Let's take a look on this characteristic of ceramics. First row is special production as blue and white rare with painted model grams of uh, Siamic, Siamese King, King Jula Longkorn. The second row is Amaro rare with the British East India Company coat of arm. Um, the dish was produced at Jing Te Zhen Kin actually and were found at Diana Shipwreck sunk in the Malaysia water. Um, did this also give the date about uh, early 19th century? And the last is the special production of Jakli Mahapasa Ton, Ton Hall Pato produced at SAP factory in French. This page this page is showing variety of Benjalong with Thai style design. Um, this is Benjalong. <coughs> and even Lai Nam Tong on blue and white on this one. Japanese transfer pin and overgrazed animal wear from Ali Takin. Um, this one and this one. Chinese traditional blue and white wear. Uh, here we are, the Chinese Qing dynasty. So we're all Vietnamese traditional ceramics production at Bat Tuong. Here, modern Japanese transfer pin dish with English mark on the base, especially this one. <coughs> and European ceramics on the bottom row. This page, is, this page is showing special sets of European ceramics for Southeast Asian market and Chino Siri, Chino Siri on European ceramics as archaeologists mid identify when they have no marks. <coughs> this page is showing Le Qing ceramics and Chinese style ceramics which produced in Siam, especially this one. This is the picture from Thailand, and this one produced at uh, Jantaburi province in Thailand, as uh, a lot of Chinese immigrants uh, live there. <coughs> and most of here is uh, Chinese uh, Chinese Le Qing ceramics. 
These are Benjolong in Tonbuli and Latanako Sin periods of Siam. These are Chinese ceramics during the People Republic of China period found in Southeast Asia. These are all of ceramics development from early history, history to 20th century. Let's move into the detail of historical background behind our prominent exhibition at Southeast Asia. Southeast Asian Ceramic Museum of Bangkok U as my work page. There are some there are some off snapshots in the exhibition landscape and the index. Our museum have also got some national award for museum design. The ceramics display is include Chinese, Khmer, Vietnamese, Champa, Lana, Sukhothai, Ayutthaya, Burmese, and Lanchang ceramics as these were supplied to domestic use and export along the Malintan Tate loose during the 12th to 18th century. This is the map of ceramics production and key ethical sites, especially in the big city and shipwrecks. Most of the ceramics production in Southeast Asia are all crossed out for making stoneware with grace, with the kin were made of clay, slab, or brick to be important part comprising of uh, five box, ceramic chamber, and chimney, arrowing the heat hole in horizon, horizontal direction across the kin. But the kin construction is Vietnam. In Vietnam, Champa and Khmer, as they built in uh, rectangle chair, with adding the fine wall in between the chamber. Uh, different with the kin construction in Lana, Sukhothai, Ayutthaya, Burma, and Lan Chang, as they were an oval shape, as you can see here. The service the Southeast Asian ceramic kin are almost similar to the kin appear in China, especially the Dagon or Kiu kin, as they were built as a cross dab in principle, but a long gauge in plan. Other type of Southeast Asian kin is up -down. This is the up kin in the form of a uh, calendrical shape for making the ungraced earthenware. Chinese ceramics, Xin Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasty were found in both on land and shipwreck sites, and usually associated with Southeast Asian ceramic, which represents the cultural pattern in ceramic taste during the 12th to 18th century, as mentioned before. Chipwreck and ceramic found inside them are one of archaeological context, giving, under, giving better understanding for dating, chronology, and characteristics of ceramics in each period of time. In Southeast Asia, archaeologists identify about uh, 30 to 40 shipwrecks to be shipwrecked, carrying ceramics that from the 12th to 18th century. Based on the comparative study, we can suggest that at the Southeast Asian ceramic with various form, color of grace, technique of, of surface decoration, and element of design might have influence from Chinese ceramic, specific, specifically Southern Song. Southern Song on Juan influence at appear on Lana and see such analyzed ceramics. However, some of the local Southeast Asian instrument were also exchanged in the each order at Bangkok and may have influence from Khmer, Bao Grace, Jar, in the 
12 to 30, especially this one. Even exchange between the Lana and the Saturnalized Ceramics, as you can see, 15th century in different seem to be most are missing. Vietnamese decorative pattern also transmit uh, to see such an liking as the local exchange, as you can see on this group. The last section will show you the masterpiece of uh, sorry, um, and the Sachanalai Valgrade jar production seem to transmit to Bangladesh or Manam Noi Kin. The last section will show you the masterpiece of each king that they were also found in several contexts around Southeast Asia, such as shipwreck port, hinterland city, and temple, even cemetery or burial site. These all are our collection. First group is the Chinese ceramics. They are commonly the export ceramics supplied by Marlin Tam Ted Luz. It starts by White Grace Kenti from the Hua Qin dead in the 13th century. This jar is Bao Grace jar from Jizhou, uh, sorry, Chu Zhao Qin dead in the 13th century. This is the green grace of Ceradon bowl from Long Xuan Qin dead in the 14th century. Here is bar grace from Qi Su Qin dead in the 14th century. This one is blue and white dish from Jing De Zhen Qin dead in the 14th century. This is the green grace dish from Long Xuan Qin dead in the 15th century. This is bar grace Chorus box from Jizhou Qin, dead in the 15th century. This is the copper green grass ever from uh, Chu Zhao Qin, dead in the 16th century. This one is the highlight that is blue grass saucer with undergrass incisors, dark on design. At the base, also undergrade incisors a lynch mark with which translates to be this dish was made in the Suan Te Lynch of Ming Dynasty. It was made at Jing Te Chen Qin and dead in the 15th century. Unfortunately, um, this de decoration technique is really hard for showing the design by photograph. This one is blue and white bow with four unglazed limbs, as it is actually the bow grace on the rim. It was made at Jing De Zhen in the 15th century. This one is blue and white from Jing De Zhen dead in the 16th century. This one is another highlight. This is well known as clarkware or blue and white dish from Jing De Zhen Qin with special decorative pattern, which give the date of, which give the date to Wali Lynch of Ming Dynasty in the 16th to 17th century and have usually been found in European shipwreck, especially VOC on Dutch India Company. Let's get back to Southeast Asian ceramics. This group will will be Khmer ceramics that were produced for religion or daily living activity in the domestic context. But some were probably export to Northern Thailand and Malay Peninsula. This piece is as fresh, chorus box from Phanom Dong Rex or Ban Kuat Kin in Buri Lam, Thailand, dead in the 12th to 13th century. This is Bao Grace, Chorus box in the form of bird from Phnom Dong Rek Kin as well. This one is the common form of Khmer Bao Grace's jar from Phnom Dong Rek Kin as well. This is an jar with a pine four knob 
and impressed dot on on the shoulder from Bangkun Chin at the at there was a city before establishment of Ayutthaya, and then they become a dependent city under it. Its form was similar to Khmer Belgrade Jar. This form of Jar was found in the shipwrecks that formed the late 14th to 15th century in small number of each shipwreck. <coughs> this group will be Vietnam mix or diverse ceramics that they were large shipments, large, large shipments for maritime trade rules. This is blue and white with a blue and white bowl from Daila on Tukmak Chin in Haiduong province, northern, northern Vietnam, dead in the 15th century. This one is <coughs> blue and white dish from Chu Dao or Mai Sa Kin in Haiduong province that in the 15th century as well. <clears throat> However, some kings were operated in the territory of Champa Kingdom, and they were also supplied to Malintam Tetlus. This is an jar with a pie fish design from Koh Sa Kin in Bindin province, central, Thailand, uh, central Vietnam. This group will be ceramics produced from the Kingdom of Sukhothai and Lana, where located in the present-day country of Thailand. However, Sukhothai Kingdom can be divided into two different kin, comprises of the kin in Sri Satchanalai as one of dependent city, and in the capital, Sukhothai. In later period, the ceramics production of Sukhothai Kingdom were Incorporate with Ayutthaya for supply to Malintam Ted Luz. And then Ayutthaya conquered it with merging to be Ayutthaya Kingdom in the middle of 15th century. This one is Green Grace's dish from Sri Sachna Lai Kin at Kok Noi village that in the late 14th century. This is the green glass dish with incisors, beautiful design of Rotat from Sri Sachna Lai Kin at Kok Noi village that in the 15th century. This is undergrace back bowl with painted chrysanthemum design from Sri Sachna Lai Kin at Kok Noi village that in the 15th century. Here is, un here is undergrace back dish with painted fit design and spur mark at a feature of stacking during the filing, as you can see here. The dish was produced at Sukhothai Kin, dead in the 15th century. This figurine is masterpiece of our museum. It is green grass figurine in the form of an elephant with really important person sits on the elephant, sits on the chair. A keeper sits on the elephant back and four warrior carrying a sword in their hand. <coughs> this one was produced from Sri Satchana Lai Kin at Bayang village in the 16th century. However, um, the, this this form of the figurine usually found in the in yeah, as most of them usually on the display in Indonesian museum. This is in place jarless with four ring handle and incises the line on the shoulder from Sri Sachana Lai Chin at Bayang village that in the 16th century. They are under grace back cover is box and a water dropper, especially this piece has only one water dropper. However, some parts were at the bow grace as one of the characteristic of the Sachina Lai Kin. You can see some bow graces on the base, sometimes it's on the lid, something like that. Uh, yeah, this is the characteristic of a young uh, village that in the 16th century. This is two color grace coverage jar with holding handle and incises chrysanthemum 
d e s i g n from s e s a t i o n a l i z e d in at b a y a n g village date in the 16th century. <coughs> This is u n d e r g r a c e back bowl with matching ridge from s u k o t a i k i n date in the 16th century. This group will be l a n n a as most of them were used only in the domestic context with no export, and most of them uh, have not been found in any shipwreck around Southeast Asia. Just a few pieces that identified to be l a n n a are uh, found in shipwrecks. Here is two c o l o r g r a c e c h i t a with applied two n o c k and in place. Elephant design on the shoulder, form b o t s w a k i n that that from 14 to 16 century. This is green g r a s s dish from w i e n g b u a k i n that in the 15 t h century. This is the green g r a s s dish with excises the line on the interior wall from w a n g n e a k i n that in the 15 t h century. This is the green green g r a s s c o v e r a g e box from k a n o n g k i n d a t in t u n g h u a village, d a t e from 15 to 16 t h century, and you, and actually it, uh, <coughs> it can be open the list on this part. This is the list. This one is the copper green g r a s e candy in the form of a swan from k a n o n g k i n At t u n g m a n village, date from 15 to 16 t h century. This is u n d e r g r a c e back dish with painted the w a s t of chrysanthemum design from k a l o n g k i n at p a y u m village, date from 15 to 16 t h century. <coughs> This is u n d e g r a c e waste with inlaid c r a y s l i p Flower design from w i e n g Thakan, w i e n g Thakan Kin, d a t in the 15 t h century. However, this form and style of dish from s a n k a m p a n g Kin have been found in only one shipwreck sunk in the South China Sea, which represents that this dish was also exported by marine time trade route. It is green g r a s s dish with excises the line on the interior wall. Date from the 15th to 16th century. Yeah, this is only one evidence of l a n n a c h i n that supply to marine time trade l o o s This is u n d e r g r a c e back dish with painted fish design. Actually, you can see the fish design here. <coughs> It was produced at s a n k a m p a n g k i n d a t e from the 15th to 16th century. Here is the green g r a s s w e s h from Pan or Ban p o n g Dang k i n d a t e in the 16th century. This is u n g l a z e d tobacco pipe from possible k i n in Lana Kingdom, d a t e from 16th to, to 17th century. Burma Kingdom, especially in the coastal area, also supplied the ceramics to m a r i n t a n trade routes for Southeast Asia <coughs> as far as the Middle East. This group will be some of example that they usually found in the shipwrecks and overseas context. This one is green and white bowl with painted l o t a t design from k o d o l k i n dated in the 15th century. This is just the new cover, a uh, new discovery of the kin production by uh, Dr. Don, uh, Dr. Don Hai from Smithsonian Institution. <coughs> This is green g r a s s dish with i n c i s e s clean design. Ah, uh, clean. Is actually the mystical animal between possibly a lion and h o t or something like that. Um, this the dish produced at t u a n t e k i n d a t e in the 15th century. This is the book. This is the brown g r a s s jar with a p p l i e d the line. 
and dot under the grace for Mataban Kin or now Moktama city dead in the 15th century. Archaeologists usually misidentify with this group of jar that they were produced at Banglajan or well known as Manam Noi Kin. The popular product of this kin is Balgrace jar in various size as you can see here. They are all produced for Manam Noi Kin actually. Uh, sometimes Mataban and Manam Noi jar were found together in the same size but they were some of different characteristics, especially the color and quality of grace. In conclusion, our ceramic dates from uh, 12th to 18th century are commonly the grace ceramic together, together with lead and grace ceramics. They were usually found in several contexts specifically at the village or city, temple, especially Hindu and Buddhist temple, royal palace, port and shipwrecks, even the cemetery on burial sites, such as Kadamon Mountain in the south of Cambodia, or even Kalatakan in Patongkas province, south of Luzon, the Philippines. However, the dating and chronology of ceramics found in the shipwrecks are more clear than other contexts. Based on, based on uh, 35 shipwrecks sunk in the South China Sea, as you can see the rest of shipwrecks in the second row. The chronology can be divided into six different periods during the late 14th to early 18th century. However, the Khmer ceramics are excluded from this chronology because they have not been found in any shipwrecks. Yeah, Khmer ceramics were found just in the Orland sites, especially in the north of Thailand and Malaysia. This chronology on uh, this chronology also suggests the cultural pattern in the marine time test in Southeast Asia that Chinese, Southeast Asian and a few European ceramics were acquired by merchant ships for multiple parts of coal for sale around the Southeast Asia. Some of them were also exported as far as south of Japan not of Australia, is of Africa, the Middle East, and even Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The Southeast Asian ceramics is appear from shipwrecks in the early 18th century as it was the size of changing to new period. Uh, the ship Thai used to carry the Chinese, Southeast Asian, and European ceramics are also identified in the bottom row here, which comprises of Chinese junk, Southeast, Southeast Asian on South China Sea junk, Chinese European hybrid vessel, especially local sailing vessels, Wang Tau, Wang Tau, sunk in Vietnam water, and European sailing vessels as protokit. Spanish and the Dutch East India Company travel between their ports around Southeast Asia. That is all. Thank you for your attention. And let's get back to Jobber. Jobber, please. Thank you, Atta. Uh, thank you, Atta, for the uh, comprehensive discussion on uh, the shipwrecks and Thai ceramics as well as the relationship to other ceramics. Uh, we now go to the uh, question and answer portion. Do not do uh, Atta. I will help you answer if it's difficult for you. Um, do we have, uh, Regina will, will yes, uh, yes. questions are. Okay. And uh, if you have audience, I think they can uh, use uh, Facebook page. Yes, okay. Uh, so reminding uh, our audience, uh, after uh, that, wonderful presentation you can now ask questions or give comments uh, for Atta 
uh, regarding the topic. And uh, we already have a few questions, uh, and I also posted it on the chat box if you would like to read that uh, on Zoom. Uh, but I would gladly uh, read them for you. So one is from Marvin Dominguez. Uh, what was the importance of these ceramics and other remains of the past in reimagination or reimagining the history and identity of land? That's one of his questions. So. Would you like to answer that now? Okay, uh, I just read the check. Uh, I, I just read the check, check yeah. that uh, they have some question from uh, the Marvin. Uh, yes. Marvin asked the question: What was the importance of the ceramics and other remains of the past? in uh, the imagination of history and identify identity of land. Uh, I would like to answer for the first question first. Uh, most of the ceramic usually produce as the big lot with similar pattern in each period of each king in Southeast Asia and even from China. Uh, yeah, they are the big lot and most of them usually similar uh, by one pattern or something like that. And yeah, especially since around 12th century, they were exchanged and supplied to Malintam Tetlus and Southeast Asia as their destination. Mm -hmm. uh, the way for transportation is the Chinese junks, uh -huh. and let let and uh, wire tie up chips in later period. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think in since the late fourteenth century, the Chinese ceramic effect to the Southeast Asian ceramics production, and yeah. It is what the period that Southeast Asian ceramics production was born, and they become to be the product supplied to Malin Tam Telus by again Chinese junks, uh -huh. and later other uh, chip building tradition also born. Yeah, that is the identity of the Southeast Asia. Uh -huh. And the second fact, second question for Marvin is how the ceramics might be appreciated in the case of building a uh, nation and identity of Asian. Yeah, uh, I think the design on decorative element are uh, really important identity of Southeast Asia, not, not Asian. Uh -huh. Yeah. And yeah, for similarity in Chinese ceramics, that is the identity of the China and East Asia. Yeah. I would like to focus on the uh, decorative pattern or the design. Yeah, that is the identity of the legend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question from Shalon. Uh, uh, before, you, about, uh, yeah. before you, I thought and I say something, I think uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to add to the, uh, the question of Marvin, mm -hmm. uh, I think in so far as the Philippines mm -hmm. it was uh, evidence that uh, there was trading already going on uh, that uh, nations, that uh, Cebu, for example, was trading with Siam. And so as a con concept of reimagining history and identity, I think this, uh, the, the entry of Thai ceramics, Vietnamese ceramics, Chinese ceramics. First, uh, you, we have to understand that uh, Philippine, the development of Philippine ceramics uh, was affected by uh, exportation, uh, importation of far better quality design 
ceramics from China, from Thailand, and from Vietnam. So in that sense, you will notice once we start trading with the Chinese and the Thai and the Vietnamese, the local local earthenware production in the Philippines beca becomes more functional. Very little artistry. You compare our earthenware, our ceramic production, with a thousand years before in the Iron Age, you have beautiful designs at that period. But once Thai ceramics, Vietnamese ceramics, Chinese ceramics enter the market, the tastes of the Cebuanos and the Filipinos uh, in terms of the design of, of of ceramics also changes. And we would have expected perhaps that Philippine earthenware would also match or develop um, to match uh, imported Thai, Vietnamese, and uh, Chinese. It did not happen. There is as yet no evidence of, of local earthenware production competing successfully against Thai and uh, Chinese. So in that sense, in terms of history, we showed that we were open to trading and that uh, we were trading with many people from different countries, uh, from different uh, localities or polities as they are called. But that at the same time also, uh, our local industry, uh, pottery industry, also waned down and became functional. So you find potteries in the Philippines at this time are very simple, just simple pot, no design, just for cooking, whereas tastes changed. Thai ceramics, I think, were used already and we're being brought to the to the countryside by local traders. That's that's the way I imagine the concept of identity. That we were be, being open to foreigners. At the same time, our, our local tastes were also changing. Um, and then in terms of appreciation, I, I think you uh, that that also answers the question. I think you've also answered it. So uh, to the next question, then Ata, yes. The question is, uh, okay. you have just you. mentioned, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camel ceramics were exported to Thailand and Malaysia. So is, uh, she's asking for archaeological evidence uh, yeah. of this export exportation for Camel ceramics from that, from may, that may export to Thailand and Malaysia. Uh, I have some research from especially. Uh, Track that archaeological sites that uh, 